watching Church of the Nazarene and you're not on our private group, um, I, that's how I send out the bulletins. If you are looking for a bulletin, you're going to have to reach out to me beforehand. We can send you out a bulletin uh, ahead of time. But we have some notes that we've added to our live stream. I'm not sure if you've been aware or noticing. There's going to be a little box that's over here on the side of me that's going to show up with what we're going to be talking about. And we're going to be looking into 1 John 3, verses 18 to 24. Uh, we talked about a lot of things as we're walking through the, the letters of John. The whole series is about having a closer relationship with Jesus. If we turn back a page, we look at some of the things that, that John was walking us through and how to have a relationship with, with, with God. See, there's two relationships we need, to, we need to keep up. The vertical one and the horizontal one. And up to last week, we've been talking about the vertical one. Light and darkness, walking in his light, walking against sin. What it is to, to deny the son means we're denying the, the father. Why he wrote and not be living in this world. We're living in this world, but not loving the things of this world. Because they go against the things of our father. Last year, last week we talked about the loving our, our, our neighbor. And he started to talk about, you know, if you love God, you will love your neighbor. There's no doubt about it. Jesus said those words, so it's not, you know, if you have one of those red letter Bibles, it's one of the red letters. And he, he goes on to talk about there's no way that you can have the love of the Father in you if you don't love your neighbor. One of the Gospels said, well, who's the neighbor? Look around. We're all neighbors. And if you were paying close enough attention, you'll notice that we looked at the 18th verse last week. Because this 18th verse kind of hinges on two points. And I, 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 I considered leaving it the last week. I said, well, what's one more verse? Because it's contingent on what this, it's, it's like a lead way. You know, John was very intent with his words. I've said that quite a few times. But he used this verse to support loving our brothers and sisters. But he also said, if you do this, this next part will happen. It's a continuation of how to strengthen our walk. We need to ask ourselves, is our love for our neighbors, our, our brothers and sisters in Christ, and our neighbors, is it sacrificial? Does it cost us something? Uh, sometimes it's hard to love our neighbors, isn't it? Can I get an amen there? Uh-huh. Sometimes it's hard to love even our brothers and sisters. It seems as believers, we usually get our feelings hurt more by fellow believers than we do by non-believers. And sometimes it's harder to love the fellow believers than it is to love, to love those non-believers. But see, God, when Jesus spoke, he didn't make a, a difference there. You know, John said to love our brethren and to love the fellow believers. Yes, we do. We should love our fellow believers even more than we love our, the non-believers. But Jesus himself said, love your neighbors. Not the way that you think love is. The way that I'm going to show you what love is. Sacrificial. Painful. See, Jesus thought of Judas when he, when he died on that cross. I don't know about y'all, but that's hard. To have someone stab you in the back and have his picture come across your mind as you die on the cross. But we're going to be reading out of God's word. If you have God's word, I trust that you do. We'll, we'll ask you to stand as we read through his word. We'll be reading out of the NIV today. Chapter 3, verse 18. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. 19, this is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. This is how we know. Church, say this is how we know. This is how we know. I'll tell you why that's important. If our hearts condemn us, then we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence. Church, say confidence. Confidence, confidence before God. And receive him anything we ask because if we keep his commands and do what is pleases him, and this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. This is how we know. Say that again. This is how we know. This is how we know. 
This is how we know that he lives in us, that we know it by the spirit he gave us. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for your word. Lord, it is my prayer that your word comes alive in us and give us, gives us the confidence that we have to know that we are believers in Christ and we follow your word. See, the, the, the enemy likes to plant doubt in our minds. But do you really do this or do you do that? How can you be a Christian if you X, Y, and Z? Lord, help us to call on you to erase that doubt so that we may have the confidence to stand before you one day and say, yes, Lord, I am your child. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Amen. Glory. Yeah, we're doing verse 18 again. We demonstrate our love for others. When we demonstrate our love for others, the sacrificial love that is in action. When we do this, the rest of this text applies. It's a pure love that exists in truth and action. One commentary tells us that this love goes beyond friendliness. Oh, it's easy to be friendly, right? When we're passing one another and we give a nice high. And then we have that little voice going, oh, I can't stand that son of a gun. Uh-huh. See, that this love that we're supposed to have, and I'm talking, I want you, I, I had you last week, picture someone in your life that you get to, and you just go to smile through the teeth thing. It's okay. We all have those people in our life. But I wanted you to picture that person, and I, I challenged you last week to love them sacrificially somehow, some way. I don't know what that looks like. That's between you and the Lord. See, when we can do that, we have pure love. And that love that is the same that what type of love vertically, if we can show it horizontally, then we can have confidence before the Lord. See, verse 19 and 20, when we have this type of love for our neighbor, Jesus tells us, we gain confidence in three things today. First one is that we gain confidence before God, before our everlasting Father. It's a definite statement. If you do this, this will happen. Period. If you do this, this can happen? No. You might be able to get this to happen? No. If you love your neighbor as I have loved you, Jesus says, you will have confidence before God. This is how. You'll notice it's in verse 19. It's also in the last verse. It's almost like two bookends that kind of keep this text together. If you do this, this will happen. There's a lot of this statements in the, in the Bible. Salvation is, doesn't come without strings attached. Uh oh, I just, a couple eyebrows went up there. I hate to break it to you, but if you think salvation is free, it's not. It requires repentance. Salvation is open for everybody. You don't have to pay anything, but you've got to give your life. Repentance is seeking forgiveness for life and sin and turning away from that sin. That's the cost of salvation. So there's a lot of if statements in the, in the word. This is a definite statement. And I want to break down this word heart. There's no word that John knew of that meant confidence. And the words are important because John is the one speaking here. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know if you've heard, but I said this in a sermon way back when that I remember spending six whole weeks just on the word, word. For in, in, the, in John's gospel, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That word, word, six weeks. Because John is a wordsmith. His words mean something. So if we're reading this at face value, and he said, this is how we know we belong to the truth, and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence, I just got to feel good. That's not what he's saying. But see, there's a very progressive movement in our, in our faith that says it's just about how we feel. We can live a life in sin as long as we feel good about God. I don't know if we're close to God, that life in sin is going to make us feel sick and distraught. So if it doesn't mean what it feelings, what does it mean? John Wesley says it means our conscience. See, John didn't have... John, the, the, the apostle, didn't have a word in his language that meant confident or conscience. So 
So that heart, not to lose heart. Don't lose your conscience. Allow your conscience to be your guide because if God is steering your conscience, God will never steer you wrong. See, when we're loving our neighbors and his meaning of the love, we are in his truth. We can rest our conscience in his truth. You see, his truth never falters. His truth never fails. Well, it's okay if you're living a life of sin, but that's not his truth. Many people will ask me, well, what do you think about this lifestyle or that lifestyle? My opinion's here. You're only asking me because you know you want a confrontation and you know this is where I'm going to turn. If you know the answer, why ask the question? See, it's his truth. I've always challenged folks to fact check me. Right here. This is where I get my facts. And if I come out where I'm wrong, I will let you know I'm wrong. Because I don't want to be wrong. Better yet, there's a, there's a charge in here that says if I steer somebody falsely because of my own teaching, then I, it's, it's my neck on the line, not yours. If you sin because of my, I want to get it right, y'all. I want to get it right. So I want to be in his truth, not in Daryl's. I don't want to be in the board's truth. I don't want to be in my Sunday school teacher's truth. I want to be in God's truth. See, when we're, in the, when we're truly loving our neighbors the way that he loved us, and we're, we're basing that definition on him, then we find ourselves in his truth. We find out that God is greater than our own conscience. Have you ever doubted your faith? I think we all have at one point, haven't we? We've doubted our faith, haven't we? Gone through a storm, and I don't know if I'm the right person to do this, Lord. Spent a whole season after a failed adoption. Lord, I'm just going through the motions. I was doing what I was doing out of obedience. It wasn't out of faith. I doubted my faith. But see, I'm going to tell you, friends, that God is greater than our own conscience. The God we serve is greater than those doubts and those whispers of you're not good enough. See, our conscience can go both ways. It can steer us correctly or it can plant doubt. Ever been in a situation where your conscience plants doubt? Or am I the only one? See, the God that we serve is greater than our own conscience. When we doubt if you've never doubted your own faith, I promise you, you'll get there. You start doing things for the Lord, I promise you that he will come against you, the, the enemy will come against you and cause you to doubt your faith. Well, there must be something wrong with my faith because I can't do this right or I can't do that right. He is greater than our conscience. He already knows our sins. He already knows that thing that we like to keep quiet. We don't want anybody else to know. Don't want anybody in church to know. Don't want the pastor to know. He already knows all those things. For those who think we can hide something from God, he's bigger than even our hidden conscience. Hmm. See, the God is greater than our conscience, both ways. Whether before him or against him. Second thing we can gain confidence in is prayer. See, if we have a conscience that convicts us, this is where John was using the word term heart. See, if we have a conscience that convicts us and tells us we're doing something wrong, then our prayers will be linked to that obedience. If we are in his love, we will pray according to his will, according to his sculpting, he receives and answers our prayers. If we pray just because it's a check, I don't know if he, I'm sure he hears them, but I don't think he wants to receive them. If we're living a life in sin, it's hard for us to expect him to bless that life. Well, but I prayed. But again, we have to live in according to his definition. See, our prayers are linked to obedience. If our heart convicts us we can have confidence in that prayer. Sometimes our prayers are not heard. 
hate to break it to you. And there maybe they're not answered. Maybe our prayers are answered with the word that we don't like to ever hear. No. See, Jesus, I remember it, and as Jesus was bowing in the garden, we just we just looked at this a couple weeks ago in our Wednesday night. And he's pleading. God, I can't take this cup. Please take this cup from me, Father. What he was saying is I can't handle the stress I'm under. I can't handle the worries I'm under. I can't handle the pressures I'm under. Please take it off of my shoulders. Then he finished it. Not my will, but yours be done. It's hard to pray for his will because we, sometimes we don't want to know his will. We only want to know what we want. I want A, B, and C. Well, what if A, B, and C is not in his will? But if we are have confidence before the Lord, our prayers are not only found in obedience. And when we pray in his will, he hears our prayer. He grants our will, our prayer. He will always answer affirmatively his our prayers if our prayer is done in his will. We say that again. He will always answer your prayer. See, a lot of people like to look at the scripture. Well, if, if, he, if we can get anything that we ask from him. That's what the Bible says. Whatever we ask, it's ours. It's right there in black and white, Pastor. I want a Maserati. Mm. I want a house free and clear that's got eight bathrooms. Who said amen? <laughs> Must be somebody with a teenager or about to have a teenager. I want a bath. I want a house with with a bathroom that's got those little the, the three way directional showers. You ever seen those? Oh, I would love to have one of them. Why isn't God answering my prayer? See, when we don't pray according to our will, but according to His, we don't ask for the stuff that is worthwhile in this nation, in this life. We start seeing things the way He wants us to see it. <clears throat> Lord, instead of that fancy house, boy, I'm going to pray for that person who can't make an electric bill this month. Because their needs are more important than mine. Father, I love this person. That maybe they've done me wrong, but I'm praying that they seek your face instead of that fancy new car that I want. See, when we pray according to his will, he always hears our prayer because... He wants us to be united as one. It's that sin. See, sin is what separates us from God. It's what separates us from the will of God. When we are living in sin, we are separated from the God who is there to be hearing our prayers. I want us to follow this because it's a lot of times we like to live in this fantasy land that God is always going to hear our prayer. He's always going to jump at our beck and knee. That is not the type of God that we serve. See, he said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves. <laughs> oh, there's, there's a big full word. We need to humble ourselves. If we will humble ourselves, then he will heal, heal our land and forgive our sins. See, we can't expect to have a close relationship with the God that created all that ever was, is, and will be until we start thinking in his will and we get rid of the sin that's in our life or ask him to cleanse us of that sin that's in our life. See, it's that sin that separates us. If we're separate from God, he can't hear our prayer. He won't hear our prayer. But I'm so grateful that when we come and we confess, if my people will humble themselves, confess their sins, I will forgive their sins. So when we do that, we, 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 we're we going to be practicing communion later on. And we do that. We have, Lord, Father, please forgive everything that I might in my own ignorance have overlooked. Make me one with you so I can dine at your table. So I can feast with your bread and your blood. We, we want to, we pray to get rid of that sin. We have such a direct line. We don't have to go through somebody. Aren't you glad you don't have to go through a pastor or a minister or a priest? Some do, some, you, you don't have to though. When he tore that 
via veil from the top to the bottom and open up access to everybody. All we have to do is repent and turn from our sin. And we can have confidence in that prayer. See, and the intention of our prayer matters. If we have the intention of the flesh, we have the intention of how, what we want, ahead of what he may want, it's hard to have confidence. I want that fancy car, or that fancy house, or that fancy shower. I want to be successful in life. I've made this comment before. In my, in my lifetime, I've made a whole lot more financially, but I've never been more happier now. Ever. And, you know, scrolling through social media, you, you hear a lot, of, you know, a lot of those preachers that are preaching that have, you know, hundreds and thousands of followers. And they talk about how God wants you to be successful. Yes, he does, but not in your terms, on his. See, I have confidence in my prayer because the intent is what he wants. We have people that are sick in, the, in our midst, people that are fighting cancer. For some, it's, it's, they're fighting it fairly well. Some of them, it's an extreme uphill battle. We have folks that are dealing with, I like to call them demons of the mind, where the dimension and Alzheimer's is tearing away their, their memories. And the, the caregivers are dealing an uphill battle. I don't, want, I don't like to see people struggle in pain, in grief. But we always pray on Tuesday nights. Not your will. Not our will, but yours be done. Father, we want complete healing for these folks. And there's a long list of people that we pray for. We want you to touch their bodies. We want, this is our desire, but... Again, only if it's in line with your will. And that's hard to swallow because we, do, we love the people that are on that list. When we pray in his will, we have confidence that he's hearing those prayers. Third thing we're, we can gain confidence in is our relationship with God. We have a relationship. Or we should have a relationship. See, it's all, our faith is all built on the relationship that we have with our Savior. Looking at verses 23 and 24, it tells us about the relationship that we have. And I look at verse 23 and it says, to believe in his name of his son, Jesus Christ, and, church say and. And. They are one and the same, to love one another as I have loved, about, as I have loved you. It's not good enough just to believe in Jesus Christ. Believing in Jesus Christ will not get you to heaven. It will not give you salvation. A lot of people don't like hearing that either. But wait a minute, what do you say? What do you say about the guy on the cross? Well, that was Jesus' call. I don't know about y'all, but everything in this book says there's a condition. You gotta believe and see, even the demons believed in Jesus. Before they were cast out of those pigs. Oh, son of God, the old most high God, what are you here to do to us? They knew exactly who Jesus was. And Jesus had to say, shut your lip. I don't need this getting out. See, believe and love our neighbor. And love one another. See, there's no doubt in my mind that Jesus is the one and only Son of God. His only begotten Son. That's what separates us from some another denomination who, who likes to think of themselves as Christian. That we're all sons and daughters of God. God had one son. One son. There's no doubt to me that he is the son of the God Almighty. But see, if we don't love one another, I remember, I'm reminded of that passage that if we speak with eloquent words but we have no love, we're nothing but a clinging symbol. We're noise. If I preach and everything I say is true, but I don't have love. My words are empty. Because see, I don't want them to be my words. We must believe in love. They go together, they're inseparable. Kind of like peanut butter and bananas. 
Huh? Yeah, that's an Elvis thing. I know that went way over your head. You'll have to see it on the History Channel later. Peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Ribs and charcoal. They go together. You can't separate those two. With our relationship with God, when we, we, and we and the God we serve become united as one. See how all of this comes back to, if, if we're one with the Father, we ask for his needs and his desires and his will. And he hears our prayer. Why? Because it's his will. If my son said, Dad, I'm praying right now that you let me do the dishes. <laughs> That's my will. Go ahead and do it, buddy. Have at it. My daughter says, Dad, I'm praying that you let me detail your car. Have at it. Have at it. Have a, have a good time. See, in my will, I, had to, I detailed on the inside of my car yesterday and spent a couple hours. But see, that was my desire to get it done. See, if we pray in the will because we're united with our Father in Heaven, everything starts to fall into place. If we're united, we're not living in sin. See, the, when we become united, it's a result of obedience. Those that keep God's commands, if we're looking at 24. We live in him and he in us. See, it's the same spirit that verse 19 gave us. 19 says us how this, 19 and this verse are kind of like those two bookends I was talking about earlier. They put things together. We can have confidence that we live in him and he lives in us. And I think we shortchange that sometimes. I'm not strong enough to do this job. I say that to myself all the time. In fact, you're right. I, I'm not. I'm not good enough to do this. I'm not strong enough. I'm not smart enough. But it's not me that goes before you. It's the Holy Spirit within me that gives me the drive and the, and the desire to, to proclaim his word. It's the Holy Spirit that to, gives people like my father the drive to take care of my mother day in and day out not knowing if she's still going to be in a home tomorrow. It's, it's the drive within us that gives us the courage to take the steps day in and day out as we go through a season of darkness. It's the Holy Spirit in us that, that drives us just to make it to church, even though we're battling stage four cancer. Am I right, Jack? Glory. I think we've shortchanged who the Holy Spirit is. We shortchange the power of the Holy Spirit and how that power can overcome certain things in our own life. Oh, I've been too bad. I've been, I've had too long of a life of sin. We we shortchange the same Holy Spirit has the same power that God separated the oceans at the Red Sea, the same power that rolled away the tomb that would have taken the equivalent of 20 men to roll it out of the way. It's the same power of the Holy Spirit that rose Lazarus up from the dead. And ladies and gentlemen, it's the same power of the Holy Spirit that brought this church back. It's the same Holy Spirit. It is not Daryl. It is not Haley. It is not the Sellers family. It is the Holy Spirit that has brought this church back. It is the Holy Spirit that allows us to go in day in and day out knowing the pain and the heartache that we face. But yet we doubt it. See, when we don't doubt it, we really recognize the Holy Spirit for the power that the Holy Spirit is. Boy, the confidence we can stand before our Father, judge, and advocate and say, Lord, I don't have much, but this is what I've got. Just to hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. I don't know about y'all, but that's good news. To me, that's good news. Amen. We doubt the Holy Spirit, but yet we, everywhere we look, there's evidence thereof. Second Corinthians. Chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. 
Do you not realize that Christ? Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. Yes, looking inward at ourselves is important. But see, when we do that, looking inwards in ourselves, when we're all by ourselves, and we have that, we can we can gain that confidence when we test ourselves. See, because if Christ Jesus is in us, He's more powerful than that doubt. He's more powerful than the shadows that we try to put ourselves under. See, when the Lord Jesus is in us, <laughs> demons beg to fly to pigs. When the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit is in us, churches grow regardless of pandemics and lockdowns. And I just got done reading a book on the post-pandemic church and all of these things that they say to do and that if you do this, this will happen and all these this will happen are happen naturally in this church. We don't have some fancy staff member to take over the digital side if you want to volunteer. We do look for volunteers. As they suggest, if you do that, you'll have more people. You'll reach longer areas and you'll reach people that don't have the ability to get out. See, people like the Styles, Brother Styles is up a few blocks. To people like the Prices, who sometimes they just can't make it in with their house full of seven. To folks like my sister, who lives a challenging life just to try to get out of the house every once in a while. My folks who are bound to their home. We have people that are living in a small town not too far from here that only have one choice to go to church because they don't have a good running car. So they choose to turn us on. Many of you have found this church from what we've done through our digital service. See, that's not the digital service. It's not the camera. It's not the phone that we were using prior. It's the Holy Spirit using those things. It's the Holy Spirit using those things. It's the Holy Spirit that has allowed our small groups and our discipleship to grow to almost 40 people every single month. How about that? It's the Holy Spirit. I'm going to challenge you today. I'm going to ask you, have you taken that inward look? Have you put that self-test on? Have you examined yourself like Paul said in 2 Corinthians? You pass that test, I promise you, you'll have confidence to stand before the Lord your God. And confidence is where I want to remain. It's not easy. Every day it's a pick up my cross and follow him type of day. Every day has its own burdens and its own weights. But to do that, to have confidence, to reflect and see what God is doing in the midst of, the, of, of his people here in Washington, Indiana, it's a privilege to have that confidence. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Lord, it is my prayer that we all have confidence to stand before you one day. We all have the confidence that says, man, I could have done this right or could have done this right. That we say, you know what, at the end of the day, I gave you my all. That confidence that gives us the anxiousness to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Father, give us the confidence, but Lord, we, we ask that you continue to work on the loving our neighbor part. So when we love our neighbor the way that you loved us, we can gain that confidence. We can gain confidence in our prayer life. We can gain confidence in our relationship with you if we only love our neighbor the way that you have loved us. Father, give us the courage to do that. And remind us of that confidence when that little voice of doubt wants to, wants to sneak into our conscience. Lord, we ask that the Holy Spirit reveals the same power that it did when it parted the waters. The same power that it revealed when demons beg to go into a bay of pigs because that's the power of the God that we serve and that's the power of the God that lives and dwells within us it's in Jesus holy name we pray amen and amen for those online 
I want to say thank you for joining us. Uh, if you're local and you want communion, you're going to have to reach out to the church. Um, and so we can set that up for you. We can still do that. Know that I love you. Know that I'm praying for you. Until next week, digital audience will say goodbye. And uh, we'll do communion here.